Uh, first of all, got to give Michigan credit. Obviously, very, very good football team. Uh, we did not play well enough in all three phases uh, to get to win. Uh, had a great environment, had a great crowd, which I think played a factor in the first half uh, and helped us out. Um, but after that, you know, we've been really good in the third quarter all year long. Um, and we weren't able, obviously, the, the turnover in the third quarter uh, was a significant was a significant play in the game. Um, up to that point, you know, obviously we were in a heck of a game and a heck of a dogfight against, uh, you know, between two of the best defenses in college football and two of the best teams in, in college football. So give them credit and I open up to questions. James, on this side, uh, you said earlier this year about how, how important it is to actually win every game at this point, the way that the college football uh, playoff is set up. How do you keep the team motivated after you lose a couple of games like this to the biggest programs on your schedule? Yeah, um, be honest, be transparent with ourselves as, as staff uh, and with the players, um, address it head on. Uh, and then move on to the next opponent and, and get ready uh, to get another win next week. Uh, we've lost to the number one and the number three team in the country. Uh, that's, not, that's not good enough. We've got to find ways to, to win those games. But address it, be honest, be transparent, go after it head on, and then move on to the next opponent uh, so we can find a way to get a win next week and um, you know, finish this thing in a positive direction. Hey, Coach Franklin. Hey, Jared. Um, obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, and you all would have needed to recover that onside kick to go down and score and tie the game or win. But going for two twice earlier in the game and being down nine rather than seven, what uh, went into making those decisions? Yeah, well, we were down by, by four. So being able to go for two and get us in a position where it's obviously a field goal gets us back in a position to take the lead or to tie the game. Um, I felt like points were going to be at a premium. These are all the things that we talk about uh, before the game. We use the analytics as well as conversations as a staff. Um, and at some point, you're going to have to you know, score enough points to get back in the game. But just trying to get the game back into a one possession game and uh, didn't feel like in that situation, uh, we didn't know how many opportunities we were going to get. So try to maximize it. James, it seemed to your right, right here next to Mark. It seemed like Drew missed open receivers today. Um, he really struggled, uh, even compared to the Ohio State game. How would you evaluate how he did today? Yeah, a couple things. We, we got to do a better job of calling a game to allow a quarterback to get into rhythm. That is, that is critical. We got to find easy completions for a quarterback to get into rhythm. That's, that's what everybody does. Uh, we got to do a good job of that. And then on top of that, you know, although there wasn't sacks, there was too many pressures, and there was too many times where we're not creating separation. Um, you know, very similar to the other game we talked about. Following up on that, um, you know, what, what, how would you describe the offensive game plan with Mike and you guys going into this week? And do you feel like you stuck to that or deviated from that? Yeah, I thought early on it was to do everything we possibly could to stay on schedule and not be in third and long situations. I thought we did that uh, for the most part. We still weren't as efficient on third down as obviously we need to be. That was the biggest issue. Although we were able to move the ball and do some things in the first half, we were not successful on third down, which, which was, the, you know, to me, the biggest issue and were problematic. I thought we were able to run the ball more consistently but in the second half, again, when, when we turn the ball over and they are grinding, you know, they, they, had a, they had a hard time getting things going offensively as well until they went to their heavy package. Um, it, turnovers in that type of game, it, it's going to be difficult. You know, they're going to do a great job of eating the clock, and they did a good job of that in the second half. I think you could see how they were calling the game. They uh, put J.J. in position to make some plays with his feet because they were struggling to move the ball. Um, but we wanted to stay on schedule on offense, and I thought we did that, but then we weren't able to uh, execute on third down. 
Hey, James, over here to your left. Uh, you mentioned, you know, calling a game to get the quarterback into rhythm. What was Michigan's defense doing that was kind of making it difficult to get Drew into rhythm? The same thing they've done against everybody all year long. That's one of the best defenses in college football. We got one of the best defenses in college football. Um, they make it challenging up front. Their front seven is able to get pressure, um, is able to get sacks. Not, not today, not a whole lot against us. Um, but then also, obviously, you know, be able to get coverage. You know, we made a couple throws that if the ball's not delivered right, one ended up being a pass interference on them. One, we were fortunate that wasn't, that wasn't an interception. Your ball location is critical in these types of games. And then obviously, you know, we had a couple shots called, but we're waiting for a specific look and a specific defense and weren't able to do that. So we weren't able to loosen them up from a coverage standpoint. Um, you know, to help with the more consistent, higher percentage throws. The other day. James, what went into the decision? How much did you think about punting with about four and a half left from your own territory there? You guys still had a couple timeouts? Yeah, at some point, you're, you're going to have to be aggressive, and you're going to have to make one of those calls uh, like we did in the first half. Uh, and and um, I think it was... Um, we went for it on fourth down, and we actually went to uh, Caden, and Caden made a huge play for us. Um, we needed to do that a few times in the second half, and at that, at that point of the game, at some point, we can't just keep giving the ball back uh, to Michigan. It puts our defense in a tough spot if we don't pick it up, but we're going to have to pick up one of those third or fourth downs to stay on the field to give us the best chance to win the game. I, I just think you punt at that situation, at that point of the game, um, against that team, uh, you may not get the ball back. Dave Van Ogden. James, the two-point conversions, the first one, why chase points in the second quarter when you don't know where the score is going to be in the fourth? The second one, why not make it a one-score game and keep your team alive with an extra point? Yeah, uh, again, um, very similar answer is we felt like points were going to be hard to come by. We were down by four. We wanted to put ourselves in a position to get it back to a field goal game. Um, again, those were all the numbers we worked through from an analytics standpoint as a staff. Everybody was comfortable with, thought it was the right thing to do. Obviously, we didn't pick it up. Second one. What about the second one? Not, the, not kicking an extra point. Yeah, for the same reason. James. That, that, I, don't, I don't understand the logic there. You're making an eight-point game. You keep your team alive. Okay, you, you don't agree with it. I'm just telling you, that's the decision. I didn't think the answer had anything to do with the second one. The first one, I understand. Yeah, we're trying to get back. We're trying to get points. We felt like points were going to be hard to come by. We wanted to get it back. Well, there's two and a half minutes left in the right. game at that point. Dave, I, I've answered your question. I don't think you did. Audrey, last question. James. Um, you, early in the second quarter, you guys had a sequence where Katron rushes for nine yards on first down and then doesn't touch the ball. You guys throw a pass to Malik Mega. I guess what went into that sequence and why did Katron not touch the ball again that drive? One more time, I apologize. Yeah, no worries. Um, early in the second quarter, you guys, Katron rushed for nine yards on the first play and then didn't touch the ball the next few plays and you guys punted. Um, I guess you threw a pass to Mega in there as well. Why not go back to Katron at all during that sequence? Yeah, actually, the one we threw the ball to Mega, that was a run. And based on the look you get, you, you, you have some outlets. You have some relief throws on the outside. Um, obviously, you know, we want to continue. I think we, we ran the ball you know, a decent amount in the first half. Um, but yeah, I think that was a run play with a relief throw based on what the defense did.